Think you don't have what it takes to make mobile apps? Guess again, the year is 2023, React Native exists, and it's very accessible for everybody to make mobile apps. So as long as you know JavaScript, React, CSS, and have a conceptual understanding of HTML, you can build React Native applications for both Android and iOS at the exact same time. Absolutely no Java, Swift, or Objective-C experience required. So how do we make this happen? Well, there's two options. You can either use React Native CLI. This can be thought of as pure React Native with nothing built on top of it. It's just all the core React Native APIs, nothing else. The second option is something called Expo SDK. This is React Native CLI with a bunch of extra tools and features built on top of React Native CLI. It makes the developer workflow a lot easier. One of the main things that Expo does is it abstracts away all of the complexities of React Native CLI and just gives you the stuff you need to make a mobile application. Now there used to be one major drawback of Expo and that was you could not use native custom modules for iOS or Android in them. However, as of the recording of this video, that is no longer true. You can absolutely write native custom modules in both and you still use Expo. Now from using Expo, you do sacrifice a little bit of control, but in return, you get a much smoother development experience. In the end, there's absolutely no reason to not start with Expo because if you decide, say, a month into development, you've you've written a lot of stuff, you got a lot of code down, you decide, you know what, I don't want to use Expo anymore, I want to use React Native CLI, you can do what's called eject. It's called Expo eject, and that will convert your Expo project into a bare React Native CLI project. All right, so let's get a new Expo project going. So you do need Node.js installed. If you don't have that, head on over to nodejs.org and pick up a copy there. But really all it takes is npx create Expo app, and then you specify the name of the project you wanna do. So I'll paste this into here and I'll just say my project. Let it do a bunch of stuff. And that's it, 23 seconds later, your project's ready to rock. So CD my project like it says, and then you can either do yarn Android or you can do npm run Android. I'll do npm run Android, and then just give it a second to start everything. Now at this point your project's running, you have a couple options for viewing and developing your project. So you can either download the Expo Go app, which is on Android and iOS, open that up, scan the QR code, or you can use an emulator. For this example, I'm gonna use my physical device to do it. So here's a screen mirror of my physical Android device. I'm going to do scan QR code. I'm gonna hold my phone up here, hold it at the code. As soon as it does it, it'll load up the application. At this point, we can break out our editor and we're ready to develop. Expo development experience is extremely smooth. The, the, the best thing about it is every change you make in code, the moment you press Control S, it immediately reflects onto the app. So let's start by making this background not burn our retinas. So background color is FFF for white. We're going to change that to 333. The moment we press save, it immediately changes. We can even modify the text to be white. You remember I said if you know CSS, then you can do React Native pretty good? That's because a lot of CSS styles work in React Native. So if I create a new class called text, I set the color to be white, and then I apply the text style to this text element by doing style equals styles.text. I save it, and now the text is white. Remember how you make text bigger in CSS? Font size, same thing works here. Font size, 36. You probably noticed our status bar up here is black, so we can go to our status bar element and change style from auto to light. And now that's white text as well. Now everything you're looking at might look pretty similar to HTML, but it's not. You cannot write HTML in React Native. However, elements that are part of React Native have an analog that is pretty close to something in HTML. So for instance, a view element, or rather a view component, would be analogous to like a div in HTML. And then a text component would be analogous to like a span in HTML. There's also a React Native component for a lot of things that you would find in HTML. So say we wanted to add a button. Let's move the status bar up here. We'll add a new button here. We'll do a button from React Native. Give it a title, something like I'm a button. Close it. Save it. I'm a button. Now there's a button that you can click. Development with React in React Native is exactly the same as development with React in the browser. The only difference is React Native is not a browser. Therefore, any browser APIs that you would use within React, you can't use within React Native. So let's just say I want to have a little text box, and every time I click the button, it increments that text box. So I can do use state. We'll just do counter. Set counter. Equals use state. Set that to a default value of 1. And then in the button, we can do an on click. We can pass it the value of increment. We can create a new function for increment. And here we can do set counter, counter plus one. We can save it. Now we just have to add a place to hold it. So what we'll do is we'll just 
move this text box down here, and we will set this to be the value of counter. We save it, and now we have a one. Now when we click the button, absolutely nothing happens because I made a mistake, it's actually on press. Save it, now when I click the button, the counter goes up. Next, let's talk about customization. So React Native has buttons and it has text boxes and it has divs and it has all this stuff, but maybe you want a component library that is a particular style, like say Material UI. Now, which UI toolkit you use or whether you use a UI toolkit at all is based completely upon preference. It's all about what you want your app to look like and how you want your development to go. Me personally, I love material design, so I tend to go with a UI toolkit that is based on material design. And for that, I use React Native Paper. The toolkit is pretty good. It has some problems, but nothing major. But, you know, you have all the main stuff. You know, you got cards, you got activity indicators, you got badges and banners and anything you can really want. You know, dialogues, dividers, floating action buttons, helper text, icon buttons, list menus, modals, everything. They also give you all the code too, so if you got a button and you want like a contain button here, this is what it would look like, you know, then you just use this code. Another UI toolkit is React Native Elements. This also contains roughly the same stuff that React Native Paper contains, you know, buttons, you know, they're not material design buttons, but hey, that's perfectly okay. If this is the kind of stuff that you like, then, you know, this, this might work okay. It's also worth mentioning that these UI toolkits have designs that are conditional based on which platform is being used. So take the React Native Paper Switch component, for instance. You have the Android version, enabled and disabled, and you have the iOS version, enabled and disabled. This is nice because iOS users are going to see the Switch components that they're used to seeing across other native iOS apps, and then Android users will see the ones they're used to seeing. So that brings us to the final topic in this video. What happens when your app is done and you're ready to publish it? You want to get it to the Android store and you want to get it to the Apple store. And this is where using Expo really, really shines. So normally, if you're using React Native CLI, what you'd actually have to do is you'd have to get Android Studio, you'd have to get Android SDK, and then you'd have to build the Android app on a Windows, Mac, or Linux machine. And then when you want to build your iOS app, you have to go take it over to a Mac. And if you don't have a Mac, you need to go out and buy a Mac. If you don't have an iPhone, you got to go buy an iPhone. Does this sound awful? Yes, it does. And that's because it is. But fortunately, if you're using Expo, you don't have to do any of that. And that's because the Expo people, the people that made Expo SDK, are nice enough to provide infrastructure to build both your Android and iOS apps on their machine. And this is an absolutely free feature, so as long as the amount of builds that you're doing is not excessive. I, I think they give you like 30 monthly uh, for Android and iOS combined, and I feel like that's pretty fair for free. I mean, to be honest, anything at all is fair for free. To do this, you're going to use a command line tool called EAS. Now, I'm not going to go through the whole process just because I don't want to burn up my own quota because I, I do use Expo quite a bit. So, But you, you would do EAS build, and then it's going to ask you a couple questions. It's going to say, you know, which platform. And if you're on Android, it's going to, add, it's going to make your uh, key for you and everything. You're going to log into Expo, and then it's going to send it off to Expo, do the build, and then, and then give you a... Uh, Android archive file at the end. And then you can take this Android archive file and upload it directly to the Android store. And then iOS is the same thing. You're gonna log in with your iOS developer account. They're gonna do all the keys and the provisioning profile and all that for you. And then they're gonna build the actual application and then give you a downloadable IPA file, which you can then drag into Transporter on a Mac to upload it to the Android I'm sorry, uh, Apple Developer Console. Going through that entire process is probably outside the scope of this video anyway, simply because at that point, it's not really about React Native. It's about publishing on Google and publishing on Apple. But just know that EAS is the way you do that. And that's pretty much it for the video. React developers are going to feel right at home with this. It's going to feel a lot like HTML. And you do have to be good at Flexbox, but it's not that hard to learn. And then a lot of the styles in React Native are the same as CSS. So those skills will help you too. There's so many UI toolkits out there that will help you build your application even quicker. And then finally, Expo and EAS has your back as it pertains to publishing your application. So as I said in the beginning of this video, if you think you can't develop mobile applications, well, think again, because you can. Hopefully this video was informative. If you have any questions or comments about anything you saw in this video, please be sure to leave them below in the comments. And as always, thanks all for watching, and I'll catch you on a future video. Take care.